Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and today's topic is cellular respiration. So let's learn together. All right, friends, it's time to talk about cellular respiration. You know, that process that happens when we breathe, that kind of allows us to use our energy from our food, pretty important. So there are a couple types of cellular respiration, and the first one we'll talk about today happens in both plant and animal cells. Um, this is a process that happens in eukaryotic cells, and it's called aerobic cellular respiration. Now, this happens in cells that have mitochondria, which all eukaryotic cells do. And mitochondria, their job is to make energy in the form of ATP for the cell. So that's the goal of respiration, is to make ATP energy. Let's not forget that. That's the main goal, make ATP energy. This process requires oxygen. That's what the aero part of aerobic means. A-E-R-O means oxygen. The process starts with glucose from our food and oxygen from the air we breathe. Those are the two reactants in this process, the two things that we need in order to start. We also are going to produce a large amount of ATP from aerobic respiration. This is the process our cells want to use if they're being most efficient. Our two waste products and the products of our equation are carbon dioxide and water. And these are the two things that we will breathe out. So we breathe in oxygen, in the beginning, our reactant of respiration, and we breathe out carbon dioxide. We also breathe out water vapor. And this is something that you can see easily if it's really cold outside and you go into the air, you'll see that water vapor come out of your mouth as kind of a cloud. So aerobic cellular respiration, the equation looks like this. It looks very, very similar to the equation for photosynthesis that we talked about in a previous video. We have glucose, C6H12O6. Again, that comes from our food. So we take our food into our body, we break it down to the bare, bare parts into glucose because our cells can use glucose to make energy. We have six oxygen molecules of oxygen gas, and we're going to use that to make six molecules of carbon dioxide, which is a waste gas for us, six molecules of water, which we breathe out, and then ATP energy. And in aerobic cellular respiration, we're going to be making quite a bit of ATP energy, uh, between 34 to 38 molecules of ATP. Again, our reactants are what goes into this process, what we start with, and our products are what we end up with at the end of the process. Um, the way I describe it to my students is, if you go to the store to buy a product, are you getting all the pieces for something or is it finished? If I go to a shoe store, I don't want to make my own shoes. I want to buy shoes from a box that are all laced up and ready to go. That's a product. It's finished. It's done. Now let's quickly compare photosynthesis and aerobic respiration. Photosynthesis only happens in plant cells. Aerobic respiration happens in plant cells and animal cells, any type of cell that has mitochondria. We start with carbon dioxide and water. This may be hard to see, but that's carbon dioxide. So a plant is going to take in carbon dioxide and water. It's going to run that through their chloroplasts in the presence of sunlight to produce glucose and oxygen. Remember for a plant, they store that glucose um, and that's why some plants taste sweet because they have glucose stored up. And then they release that oxygen, the majority of it into the air for us. We take in that oxygen when we breathe and we eat food to make glucose and it goes through our mitochondria. During this process, we're going to be creating 36 to 38 ATP. It's aerobic respiration. So we're being as efficient as we can and making the most of the ATP. Then we also release carbon dioxide and water. So these are our waste products for respiration. You'll notice this is a cycle. It is a never-ending cycle, which is very convenient, and it's why plants are so important to us. Not just because we eat plants and they're healthy, but because they provide us with the things that we need to survive. Again, photosynthesis occurs only in plant cells. 
while aerobic respiration happens in plant and animal cells, and really all eukaryotes. So funguses are included in this, as well as protists, um, which are another uh, kingdom of eukaryotes. The second part of cellular respiration we're going to talk about today is anaerobic cellular respiration. And since aerobic had oxygen, we can guess that anaerobic means without oxygen. And some cells are able to go through respiration without oxygen. Some cells do this all the time, and some cells like our body cells do this when they have to. So a lot of times this is kind of a crisis mode for your cells. It's called fermentation. And it helps us make a lot of things in life like bread, alcohol, and other foods like sauerkraut or that fancy tea called kombucha. A lot of this is formed using fermentation, which is essentially anaerobic cellular respiration. This happens in the cytoplasm. It doesn't require any organ else. So this happens without mitochondria. So prokaryotes can do anaerobic cellular respiration too because they don't have mitochondria and mitochondria are not required for anaerobic respiration. Glucose is broken down still. The process is largely the same, except without oxygen. There's no mitochondria and no oxygen, but we take glucose and we break it down and release energy as ATP and then to waste products. Lactic acid is a waste product of our muscle cells and alcohol and CO2 is a waste product um, when we're making something like beer or wine um, or any like bread. So yeast will make, um, will produce alcohol and CO2 when you're making bread. The quick thing to remember is anaerobic, it's not efficient. Um, that's why it's able to work in prokaryotes. It's why it's our body's crisis mode. It only creates about two ATP. So this would not be something you want to have your cells working in all the time. That lactic acid, that's what's known as feeling the burn when you're working out. That, that kind of, uh, that pain almost while you're working out that you know isn't soreness, that's lactic acid buildup in those muscles um, and in those cells. Continuing on with anaerobic, we start our, our formula the same way. We have our glucose, C6H12O6, and it's a reactant. Now we don't have oxygen. So glucose is really our only reactant in anaerobic respiration. And that is used to make two ATP. That's just a small amount of ATP. Remember, aerobic respiration makes between 36 and 38 ATP. So significantly more with oxygen. And then our byproducts are going to be lactic acid or alcohol and carbon dioxide. Those are the products of this process. So again, it's crisis mode for your cells. It's producing a little bit of energy so that you can keep going, but it's not ideal. The last thing about anaerobic cellular respiration or cellular respiration as a whole, let's think about what type of respiration our cells would be performing in these specific situations. So if we're going to just start running and we have 15 seconds to sprint as fast and as far as we can, what type of respiration would we need to use? Do we still have oxygen available in our cells? The answer is yes. For that 15 seconds, you have oxygen available in your cell to help it pump out as much ATP as it can. And that's why in those first uh, 10, 15 seconds of a sprint, as far as you're going, you're doing okay. But at, past that point, depending on how, um, how fit you are, it's gonna start hurting pretty quickly because you're gonna have to switch to anaerobic after that. If we're in the last mile of a marathon, what type of respiration would your cells perform? Well, you've already run over 25 miles, so you're probably not in aerobic anymore. So you don't have oxygen available in your cells as a stored source of oxygen, and you're running on fumes. And that last mile of a marathon, that's when you see people falling down, people passing out, it gets crazy. So your cells are just trying to stay alive and just keep functioning however they can. So in the last mile of a marathon, your cells would be operating in anaerobic cellular respiration or without oxygen. That's why your muscles will start burning really bad at that last mile. And the last situation here, um, the muscle cells in your triceps after 100 push-ups. So I can't do 100 push-ups comfortably. It would take me a while. Um, I'm sure some of you can. 
But after the first 10 or 15, um, your muscle cells are going to run out of that oxygen. Again, anaerobic is for extreme circumstances. Um, I can't think of a survival situation where you're going to need to do 100 push-ups. Um, but you just don't have that much oxygen stored in your cells in order to fuel this appropriately. So you're going to need to switch to anaerobic cellular respiration. After 100 push-ups, uh, especially if you're like me, not the most comfortable thing for a, me 100 push-ups, you're going to start feeling a burn of lactic acid in your triceps muscle. And that is what it would be. It would be anaerobic. Today we learned that all cells go through cellular respiration in order to make energy prokaryotes and eukaryotes alike, plant and animal cells. We also learned that there are two different types of cellular respiration, aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic respiration takes oxygen and glucose and turns it into water, carbon dioxide, and ATP energy. This requires oxygen. The second type of cellular respiration is anaerobic. Anaerobic means without oxygen. In anaerobic respiration, the process is the same except there is no oxygen and it occurs in the cytoplasm. In this process, only two ATP are created, so it's not nearly as efficient. Well, that's it for today. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you later.